What's up guys? Yes, you read that title right. Today we are checking out the Hyper Scorpion from Juiced Bikes. I am pumped for this review. I know a lot of you guys have been asking about the Hyper Scorpion for a while. So hey, we got it. So hey, let's dive right in. This is the Hyper version, right? So Juice Bikes has two models. There's a regular Scorpion and a Hyper Scorpion. They like to do this. They've done it with the Scrambler too. Hyper is, you know, bigger battery, faster. It's got a few more gadgets and gizmos on it, but it's still kind of the same thing as the Scorpion, kind of, sort of. Really the biggest difference is that the, the regular Scorpion is more properly an e-bike, and this is more pop properly a moped. Like it's, it's, it's kind of still an e-bike and you can ride it like a class three e-bike. If you're in the lower levels of assist, the throttle cuts out at 20 miles per hour and then, you know, pedal assist can take you up to about 28. So, you know, that, you know, class three e-bike, okay, but it can go a lot faster than that. It's just the way that it arrives to you right out of the box. You just put that up into race mode and then you can use the throttle to go as high as 30 or, you know, beyond if you get a good breeze or a downhill. So it is just a little bit too fast and powerful to really be considered an e-bike. Now, I think this is fine. Actually, I love it because it's fast, it's fun, it feels more like riding on a motorcycle. You're probably going to need to get it registered as a low power scooter. It really depends on the state that you live in. If you check the full written review back on electricbikereview.com, I have a link to a website that has a really nice breakdown of low power scooter laws by state. For example, here in Colorado, it needs to be registered. You have to pay like six bucks and you get uh, you know, show your proof of driver's license and everything and you get a little low power stick scooter sticker to put on the back. I filed my paperwork for it. I have not got my sticker yet. I'm hoping it'll get here any day now, but I've been too excited for this. So we're just gonna you know, jump in and do the review today. Now the price on this is $28.99 for the Hyper model. The regular Scorpion comes in at $21.99 and it's, uh, you know, like I said, it's pretty similar, a little bit less powerful, right? It's got a 750 watt motor in the back versus here we've got a 1000 watt nominal motor from Bafong, custom design motor too. The regular Scorpion also has a smaller battery. Here we've got the big 52 volt, 19.2 amp hour. And then on the regular Scorpion, you'd be looking at a lower 52 volt, 13 amp hour. So a lot higher capacity here. You get some other goodies like having the mirrors up here and the turn signals. Now this is required since it's since it's so powerful that it can be considered a, a moped or a scooter rather than just an e-bike. At least in Colorado, it's required by law for it to, it has to have mirrors, it has to have turn signals, it has to have a brake lever activated brake light. So these things are on here basically for complying with regulations in various different states. And really it just is, you know, making you ride safer, right? Having the brake activated tail light is awesome. Turn signals is great. Mirrors is just fantastic. Once you get used to riding with mirrors, then whenever you jump on a bike that doesn't have them, you'll feel like you're, you know, it'll feel like you're riding blind almost, right? It's like you got a huge blind spot all of a sudden. But other than that, they're, they're pretty similar, right? Not, not a ton of huge differences, mostly just more power and speed for the Hyper Scorpion. You get some other goodies on here, like there's a horn, you can see it right down there. There's even an alarm system. We'll, we'll show you that in just a little bit. But anyways, as you see it here, $28.99. Now we did go for the tall seat option on this since it's a mini bike sort of style, that compact style. Not real fun to pedal when you're tall like me, six foot three, right? So they sell a tall seat option and that is it right under here. Now, normally the seat just sits all the way down on this part of the frame here, but with the tall seat option, you just unscrew the seat, slide this thing in there, screw everything back together and boom, you just got yourself about three more inches of height on it. Pretty decent. I don't, uh, you know, I don't get full leg extensions, but it's easy enough to pedal that I feel comfortable pedaling it around all day. So. I think that does the trick, honestly. It still has that nice the, you know, upright seating position, relaxed feel to it. It's a blast to ride around. You feel cool, you look cool, people compliment you on it. It really is a, a remarkable ride. I'm, I'm impressed with what Juiced has done here is in terms of just transportation around town, whether that's out riding for fun, going to visit a friend, doing some commuting, some shopping. I mean, this thing is like pretty good for utility too. You got these nice aluminum alloy fenders with good Full coverage in the back in this rack, super sturdy. It's a little bit funky shaped, right? These are thicker than standard gauge tubes. So it can be a little bit more difficult clamping things down on there, but I was able to get creative with it. In the end, I actually, I put a, like a big cardboard box right here and bungeed it down. I had a little cardboard carrier. Now they're gonna be making some accessories for that, like a passenger kit and then some different, uh, there's like a, some kind of like a rack, big old, frame rack that you can put back there. There's gonna be some stuff that's specifically for delivery drivers. The downside is none of the accessories are really 
available yet. Even the tall seat is on back order, actually. We're, uh, and shout out to, you know, Tora and Rich and the other folks at Juiced for getting us this Hyper so fast and the tall seat option so that we could do the review on it. But for a lot of other folks, they're having to wait a while for those accessories to ship or even to be available for ordering on the site. So might have to hang tight for a little bit to get some of those. But even just the stock accessories, they're, they're awesome. We can run through them a bit here. The mirrors here, nice, durable, sturdy construction. We'll pop that up here. You can take a look at how they're mounted. Got the little cover on it to protect it there. Uh, adjustable here, you can just kind of swivel them. A uh, pretty, pretty good angle too for you know, swiveling them around to get them just right. So yeah, you got your, your two mirrors there. You got the headlight here. This thing is awesome. So the ring you see around the outside lights up and that's just always on, same with the brake light. And then there's a, a high beam that'll activate those two LEDs right there. And it's bright, we're talking 2000 lumens. And that's the you know high beam switch right here. 2000 lumens is crazy bright. The average car headlight is 1300 lumens. And I mean, you have two of them on a car, right? For 2600 total. So this is getting right up there with having two car headlights you also got the signals for your blinkers there and a horn it's not going to honk since we have the battery off but yeah there's your front turn signals horn is kind of hidden away right under there got an extra reflector right up there you also get an alarm system on here which is just awesome i'm i'm a big fan of this honestly i actually haven't been locking the bike up because it's got the alarm system that's it right here just kind of tucked in right next to the controller and when you get the bike you can the, the the alarm is a separate thing right it's got batteries in it it's wirelessly operated so you can mount that wherever you want so i you know did what they did in the video the the setup video that juice provides and i just stuck it right on the side of the controller and as soon as i did that i, I was like well crap i hope that uh, the batteries don't die anytime soon because that is going to be a pain to get off like those are some seriously sticky adhesive pads so <laughs> hopefully that lasts a long time i have no idea what battery life expectancy is on something like that so hey you know i guess we'll find out but yeah it's uh it, it works awesome here let me dig the keys out of my pocket so there is the remote for the alarm just yeah nifty little remote and it's pretty dang programmable. You can change the alarm tone. There's eight different types of alarms that you can configure it for. There's a bunch of other settings that I didn't really mess with, but if you want to arm it, you just press the lock button. Very loud beep, and then it'll give you another one to let you know that it's armed. And then from there, if you were to you know start moving around the bike, then it'll get you a really loud buzz. And after that, if you keep moving it, then it just goes bonkers. And I'm talking like <laughs> brand new car alarm loud. It is super loud. So then you, you can just arm it with the unlock button and it's safe to do again. I have forgotten about the alarm at least three or four times while I've been riding it around and tried to, you know, start putting the battery back on or getting on to ride and set off my own alarm. So it works and it works great. And the reason I love it on here is I don't, lock it up when I go just about anywhere. I just park it in a pretty obvious place right near the entrance or near a window. You know, if I'm going to work at a coffee shop or something, then I'll park it near a window where I can see it. And then I'll just arm the alarm and walk away. And it looks enough like a moped, you know, like a scooter. And especially you know, if you take the battery off and bring it in, which I always do, then it, you know, it's, it's not gonna look super stealable and it's heavy too. I mean, this thing weighs about 105 pounds with the battery on there and with the tall seat option. So it is pretty big and hefty, right? So I think it doesn't look like a bike that you would wanna just jump on and ride away, right? So you get the suspension, awesome suspension on this thing. This rear frame suspension, this is called a swing arm suspension, called so because this, uh, you can see the swivel joint right here? For the rear frame, these, these stays right here can swivel up and down as this compresses. So you've got two of those on either side, coil suspension. They are adjustable. Let's see if I can, uh, any, anyone who owns or works on motorcycles will recognize this right here. I don't remember the name of the tool to it. It might be called a spanner wrench, but basically you need a special wrench to turn this and kind of ratchet this up on those levels right there, you can compress that spring or preload that spring. So if you're a little bigger rider, you need to tighten up those springs a bit, you can do that, compress those. Up front is coil suspension as well. You've got preload on the left right here, and then you've got a hydraulic lockout clicker over on the right. The front suspension up there, it's about 80 to like 80 to 100-ish millimeters of travel. 
it wasn't specified what the travel is but just from doing some experimenting you know loosening it up all the way and really leaning into it with my full weight that's about what i would say for it in the back there is a bit less it's probably it's about 40 to 50 millimeters of travel not a ton of travel but it feels incredibly comfy i've been cruising all around town with it this isn't really a thing that you would take you know off-roading on some crazy single track trails or something it's it's meant to for like around town commuting utility vehicle just you know having fun out cruising and it does fantastic for that you know going over bumps and potholes and uh up and down uh you know riding up and down sidewalks and things like that it feels fantastically comfortable enough so that i, I don't ever feel like i have to stand up to kind of cushion out and right over the big bumps. I'll just stay sitting down and the rear frame suspension takes care of it. Another thing they got up front, which is pretty sweet if you ask me, is bump stops. Though that is these, these things right here. They are adjustable, you can swivel them around a bit. But what a bump stop does is it keeps the handlebars from turning too far in either direction. So when you turn, they bump and stop the turn. They bump right into the frame there. The purpose of that is just stability of the bike. Have you ever been, uh, you know, you're moving your bike around in your garage and the handle, you're not holding onto the handlebars and they swing all the way to the side and the bike tries to fall over sideways. You don't want to be in that situation when you have a 105 pound bike or scooter. That's, that's not a fun time, right? So the bump stops help to keep it a bit more stable. That can feel weird if you're not used to it and you're uh, just you know again like if you're moving it around at the bike rack or something your turning radius is quite a bit bigger now it turns more than enough for normal riding operation it's just purely a, a safety thing when you have the bike stationary okay uh other accessories to talk about on here i think we about covered them i mentioned the light back here is uh, it's integrated right so it's always on and then it is brake activated it gets brighter let's actually we'll go ahead and just, let's dive into the controls and fire that up because that's really one of the more unique things about this bike you know we're using the same controller over here that juiced has on all their bikes but it's got a little bit different setup on it for how it works with the hyper scorpion so one thing that i am not a huge fan of is that to power the bike You've got to put the key in and you've got to leave it in there, right? So your keys are just kind of jingle jangling around while you're riding. Now they are locked in there when it's in the on position, so they're not going to fall off. It's just kind of annoying, I guess, <laughs> to have to have them all jangling there. Now, it, there's some concern too about like, oh, what if you forget and leave them in there? But that doesn't seem very likely to me because you, you know, when you stop, you want to turn, turn it off and that's the best way to do it but that that still could happen you know be careful and don't leave your keys in there i do a lot of riding on motorcycles and have trained myself to remember my keys and you know now that i think of it i have killed the battery on a motorcycle a few times because i forgot my keys in there so be careful about that now you, you turn the key on here you also have to turn on the battery right here I'll give you the little ring the green ring to let you know when it's turned on now when the display fires up here let's get a good angle here there we go when it fires up, you'll see that little headlight indicator. That's because the lights are on by default when you fire it up. So there is that ring up front, quite bright. And honestly, this works pretty well for most night riding. And then if you need a little extra juice, you got that high beam right over here. This is actually about how controls are set up on most motorcycles, where you have your high beam up at the top and then your turn signals and then your horn on the very bottom. So we'll flip on that high beam and it is it's bright. It's super bright. It's awesome. I don't actually use it very much because the ring is more than enough. And then you have the brake light. There is the standard brake light. And then I'm going to squeeze the lever up here so you can see that activation. It is much brighter once you do that. And you got the turn signals too. You can flick that on. And those are quite bright as well. Really did a good job with these, right? Now it is easy to forget and leave the turn signals on. You know, they don't turn off automatically like they do in a car. So get used to, you know, you turn, then you turn off your turn signal. Otherwise you're gonna be riding along with it for who knows how long. Don't wanna do that. Now other controls you got over here, you got a USB charger, check that out. Full amp of power from that too. So you can charge an iPhone or an Android. Now the the real estate up on the handlebars is is kind of low, right? Like you can you could put something here and something here. I've actually mounted a speaker and uh, my phone on there, and that was really all that there was room for. You know, I put my phone right over here. That is speaker. That's kind of a round thing right there. I might play around with the real estate a little bit. You know, the 
the USB charger, for example, you could move kind of like down on the side here, and then you could mount a phone right up there or something, but it's it, it's kind of limited, so you might have to get creative. There are those like custom riser bars that you can put on there that will give you a little bit more space to work with. I do love having the charger though, because then you, you got a phone or something like that, you can charge it while you go. The battery is just absolutely massive. Got plenty to go around. All right, moving over to the display here that's situated at a good angle. Now, similar to the Rip Current S that we looked at last week, it does remember what power assist level that you left it in. That's that three in the bottom corner there. That can go all the way down to off. Now, even though that's off, that's just your pedal assist. The throttle is still live. That's your twist throttle right there on the right grip. So you can go up to Eco. Eco is very light power, you know, like cancel out the weight of the bike light power. It doesn't help you out a whole lot. Then from there, you can go up through one, two, and three. Pretty hefty assist levels. Once you get up into three, it's easy to pedal and reach 28 or so miles per hour on flat ground without having to put in a whole lot of effort. And then if that's not enough for you, you can go up here into sport mode where it really puts more power into it. And then the last one, race mode. When you're in race mode right here, it's just no holds barred, full power for pedal assist and then full power for throttle too. So it'll, once you put that into race mode, you can just sit back and use the throttle and it'll carry you as high as 30 miles per hour. Hence the, you know, it's really kind of more of a scooter designation than a true e-bike. So just keep that in mind. It's really important to, you know, get this registered with your state as a scooter if you're gonna be riding it like that. You know, get get insurance, get, get make sure that you're cleared away legally so that you're, I'm not going to get into any trouble and not making a bad name for the rest of us who do ride e-bikes. I'm going to move that back down to Eco. Now there's quite a few other readouts on here. This is the same as any Juiced bike display and honestly Juiced has a, they have a fantastic video on their YouTube channel where Tora himself, founder and CEO of the company, goes through all of the stuff for the display, advanced settings, how it works, the controllers and everything. Highly recommend you check that out since they do such a good job. I'm just gonna kind of gloss over it on here. So you got your speed read out there on the right, battery meter on top, that's nine bars, very precise, and it is actual remaining capacity as opposed to most e-bikes that show current voltage, which fluctuates under load. So long story short, this battery meter actually shows you how much you have left instead of jumping around as you ride. Definitely a fan of that. You got your current voltage off the battery up there on the top left. And then the odometer right down there, 127 miles is how many miles I've put on this so far. You can hold the plus button down and that will turn off the lights. So then you know, no more headlight, no more taillight. So you know, don't do that, just leave those on. Good for safety, right? You can hold down the down button for a walk mode. Always useful, especially when you have a such a big hefty vehicle. Then you can hold the power button, which is on the back of the display here, and plus, and that will get you into sort of like an advanced readout screen that shows you like, you know, the watt, watt hours on the battery, the temperature, how many watt hours per mile you're getting. I'm getting 20.7 watt hours per mile. I haven't reset that screen since I got the bike. So, you know, 20.7 watt hours per mile, and we've got a 1000 watt hour pack, then, you know, that means you can get, oh, about 50 miles out of the pack, just, you know, how I've been riding it. And I've been riding it pretty, uh, pretty, <laughs> pretty aggressively, let's put it that way. I'm typically in at least level three going, you know, 25 miles per hour or faster, sometimes pushing it even more than that. So that's pretty decent for, you know, about a 50 mile range if you're pushing it fairly hard. I think if you were to be pushing it, like say only the throttle and riding it around 30 miles per hour, it'd probably be more like 20 miles of range, right? But then if you were, you know, wanted to pedal a bit more, lower levels of assist, you could really, you know, get, they, they say 70 plus on their website. And I think that's pretty realistic if you want to put a little bit more pedal effort in. So I'm going to push the power and plus again, just get out of that screen. Now that is the twist throttle right here on the right grip, variable twist throttle. It gives you power in any assist mode, but it does give you more power in the higher assists. So if you're you know, down in eco or level one, you still get power. They'll take you up to 20 miles per hour. It's just a little bit more, a little bit more tame, a little more balanced. And then if you're in race mode and you hit the throttle, it just, it takes off. It's, it's ready for business. And then race mode, of course, will let that throttle go past 20 miles per hour. Really nice, smooth power delivery, whether you're using the throttle or the pedal assist. Pedal assist, 
on this bike is a little bit strange. It's a cadence sensor and a torque sensor both. But they they behave differently than on most other e-bikes. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that in the ride test. It's difficult to explain without demonstrating it. But you do get both a torque sensor and a cadence sensor. So that means it's pretty responsive and it can the pedal assist is what will really take you up to the higher speeds unless you're in race mode right so you got a 56 tooth chain ring up there steel chain ring got the nice double-sided alloy bash guard keeps the chain from jumping off helps to protect it keep your pant legs out of it and then all the way in the back here this is the shimano hyperglide cassette it is a 11 to 32 tooth cassette there eight speeds so the you know, that's a, it's a pretty decent range. I, I mean, it's not great. I guess it's about average, but for a mini bike like this with such a powerful electric drive system, honestly, it's pretty awesome. And the way they have this set up actually is really built for speed. It is, it's kind of difficult to see when it's stopped. We'll take a look at it a bit when we ride it around here. But essentially from gear like four through eight, you know, everything on the top end, the harder gears, lined up really well with the front chain ring up there and if you shift all the way down like you know over to two or one right there the chain gets quite a bit of stretch that way and you actually get some rubbing and uh, almost like a rattling or grinding sound from the chain hitting the side of the bash guard right up here right so they geared it for speed big time i think the reason why this happens is just, it's a short bike you know when you're talking just the difference from the chain ring back to the cassette because of the mini bike and the 20 inch tires and everything pretty short right there so that angle of the chain is much more pronounced and so i think they had to you know make a decision are we going to gear this for the higher end high speed or for the lower end low speed they decided to gear it for high speed because it's the hyper scorpion which i think is a fantastic choice honestly i mean it's a shimano altus here right step up from turny in terms of quality but you know still nothing incredible but i think honestly it is a great fit for the hyper scorpion it's meant to be ridden more like a moped still is pretty satisfying to pedal especially with that tall seat option you can get a little bit longer of leg extensions the shifter pretty basic here with the shimano revo shift now normally this shifter would go on the right grip but they have it on the left which is why these numbers and the labeling and everything on it is upside down it doesn't really matter it still works the same either way the reason they do this is because they want the throttle on the right grip so it feels more like a motorcycle right motorcycles always have that over on the right so i'm good with that you know you don't really need to be able to read the numbers it's pretty straightforward you you know shift easier one way and shift harder the other way so i think that gets the job done just fine moving around to the other side here you know i just washed this thing before coming out here and wouldn't you know it rode through some mud on the way really like the the hyper scorpion on here good good style to it they've got the motor cable right here on the inside of the chain stay this is pretty cool actually it, it runs kind of underneath right here inside the chain stay and then it's it's really hard to see but basically it's running like between the brake rotor to get into the to the motor there now a lot of e-bikes the motor cable runs along the outside and will you know go into the axle out here this internal sort of setup that juiced has going on is awesome it's a lot more resilient because if you have your motor cable connection out here bike tips over on that side then you know that could really mess up your connection <laughs> like that could that could make it so you have a pedal only moped for a little while so i think this is a pretty sweet setup that they've got going on you've got some extra mount points right here for foot pegs they've got a passenger kit so you put those foot pegs on then you can add a seat right up there so it can carry quite a bit of weight 275 pounds is the list listed weight capacity on there Brakes here are from Tektro, the Tektro HD E350, which I think Juiced uses on possibly all of their bikes now, right? Hydraulic disc brakes, we've got a 160 millimeter rotor in the back here and then 180 millimeters up front, since up front is really what does most of the stopping power there. The brakes feel great, very easy to actuate. Three finger levers on these. Hydraulics are awesome because they have that essentially instant activation. They're much easier than a mechanical brake. You don't have to maintain them as frequently, you know, tightening cables, that kind of stuff. All right, what else we got to talk about on here? I'm gonna pop the battery out and then we can also check out the frame while we're over here. So to get the battery out, we've got to pop the key out here. We'll turn the battery off, turn it this way. Then just have to get this started. Now nah, I can't do that too. 
All right, so I got the battery loosened up here. It comes out kind of diagonal, right? Just like straight towards you if you're on the side of the bike. And it is a monster. 11.9 pounds, about 12 pounds there, which really is not bad considering it's about a kilowatt hour worth of capacity. There's the charge port swivel cap for it. And I've mentioned this before, these don't seem like they seal very tight. So you know, hopefully no water gets in there. I haven't had any issues with it so far. I like the position on it where it's up high. So if you're charging it on the bike, then it's out of the way of the cranks. You're not gonna have to worry about that getting tingled up in the cord. The frame here is just super sturdy, you know, custom frames. This is one thing that Juiced is really known for is their frames and their batteries, of course, just such good integration with that. They've got the cabling running down here. This is like a, a faux internally routed cabling. This is actually a, a rubber, sort of like a rubber seal strip. So the cables run in there, you got the seal strip on top. This is a very good setup in my opinion, because this is, making it easy to get to those cables if you're doing some maintenance on it yourself or you just you take it to a shop easier for them to work on right there's the other uh, that swing arm connection for that rear frame suspension right there and lots of cables running underneath here they all seem to be you know very well securely mounted they had a problem on one of their previous bikes where it was the cables were kind of bumping up against that bash guard. So very good to see that they have gotten that sorted out. Really rock solid integration here. I love the fenders, they're mounted well. I, you know, not to pat myself on the back because I did mount the front one, but I, I like their setup, right? It, they mount well, they've got good, good stays for them. Aluminum alloy is really resilient. It's not going to scratch or rust like steel might, doesn't rattle as much as plastic is sometimes prone to do. And I've had very good experience with these fenders so far. I mean, they've done a fantastic job. As you saw, I got a little bit of mud on here, but, but for riding through a whole bunch of puddles and mud on the way here to do the review, like not bad, you know, a little bit, a little bit of dirt right there. That's totally livable. So solid job there. Well, will get this beast of a battery mounted back in here. And then just snaps in there. Very rock solid feel. It's easy to be confident that it is mounted properly. I'm just gonna put these keys back here so that I don't forget about them. Uh, what more do we have to talk about on here? Uh, go back up into the cockpit a little bit here. High rise handlebars. These are just about the same hand, might be the same handlebars actually that's on the juiced scrambler. Got this nice rise to it so that when you're sitting on the bike, it just feels so rock solid, comfortable, just, it's like a perfectly upright seating position. You've got just a little bit of a back sweep to those handlebars, not much. Helps it to feel a little bit like a motorcycle, not not quite. I've, I've ridden some other mini bikes that had them like really back at that 45 degree angle, but it is just super comfy. I'm actually just gonna jump in here on the seat. I don't have the wide angle lens on right now, but you guys can kind of see, I guess it's just nice upright comfortable rubber grips on here they are locking so they're not gonna you know rotate at all even if you bear down on them not ergonomic you know nothing special they, they get the job done you know their grips brake levers are easy to reach on both sides the you know, everything is really reasonably easy to reach uh, all things considered you do have to move your hand a bit to operate the high low beam you know blinkers and stuff like that but it's it's not bad. I do have pretty big hands, right? So if you're you're a smaller handed person, then you may have to take your hand off to get to those or for bumping up that assist. But you don't have to do it. You don't have to be pressing any of those buttons very much. Thanks to how good of a job they do with tuning their pedal assist and the power delivery as you ramp up in speed. Really phenomenal job from them. And we haven't talked about the wheels and tires yet. So let's take a look at these big old 20 inch by four and a quarter here definitely a, a street tread on these they're very very smooth very efficient inflate up to 35 psi you can lower those down a bit for you know some more comfort if you need to but you're really going to lose a lot of rolling efficiency there and that would just kind of be overkill considering the full suspension here excellent puncture protection on these things they have five millimeter puncture protection layer i'm not sure where that is in terms of you know how, how close that is to the outside of the tire but five millimeters is awesome there's actually some videos on the juice website where they uh, are on their youtube channel where they're writing it over broken glass and nails and all kinds of crazy stuff so these are designed to just roll over anything that might be in the road without going flat these are i think it's innova uh 
Let's see. Yeah, Innova makes those tires, which is a brand that I'm not familiar with, but they kind of, you know, come well reputed and they've been performing fantastic. Very hefty, strong feeling wheels here from their cast alloy construction. These are the cast alloy arms on here. They're pretty wide. This is what adds both a lot of weight and a lot of stability to the bike. It just feels very hefty and strong. You've got a nice big 12 millimeter through axle there on the front and the rear, which is awesome to see. It's a little bit more, you know, it's a lot more sturdy than most e-bikes that will have, you know, a nine millimeter axle up front. We got reflectors on the side, you know, there's some on the side of the fork and some on the sides of the wheels as well. Now, no reflective striping on the sidewalls, which is a little bit of a bummer. I'd like to see that, but really, you know, when you've got the other reflectors here, that does a good job. The branding on here, you know, Juiced and Hyper Scorpion there being lighter colored, does help it to stand out and get a little bit more visibility from the side. And really the headlight does a good job of that too. And the tail light, actually, let's fire that up. It's starting to get a little dark here, so you may be able to, to see that from the side here. Even from the side, pretty bright. And same for the tail light. You know, it's not super dark here, but it, it does wrap around there. So you get that pretty good visibility. So yeah, I think it's good enough for it, right? And then they've got some other color options for it as well. There's the, um, what do they got? Brushed aluminum and electric blue, I think are your two other color options. So if you wanna be a little bit more visible, you could go for something like the brushed aluminum. Now the cranks on here, 170 millimeter forged alloy. That's the standard length on it. Welgo alloy platform pedals. Now they get really low to the ground when you are riding. So there is some risk of getting pedal strikes, as you can see right there. I had that happen to me where I was taking a turn and trying to pedal and struck my pedal down onto the pavement. So just kind of be careful about that. If you're going around a sharp turn, keep your pedals up here. <laughs> now, something to keep in mind for this bike, if you do want to get one, is that you have to order it online. Juice does not have any dealers or sell in any stores anywhere. So you can't test ride it before you buy it. And when you get it, you're going to have to assemble it. You'll get it ready to go. Now it's going to come partially assembled. You're going to have to put on the handlebars and the front wheel and you know, make sure the brakes are lined up and tuned okay. Check the derailleur tuning. You're going to have to do a bit more assembly on here compared to a normal e-bike. You're going to have to mount that front headlight, get the bump stops lined up, connect a bunch of cables for the horn and turn signals and headlight and what have you. You're also going to have to, you know, set up and mount the alarm system, install the tall seat if you got it, because even if you order it with the bike, it ships separately. Right, so you've got a decent amount of work to do to set it up. It's, it's really not, I mean, it take, took me about an hour to get it ready to go, but it does take some work. And since this thing weighs so much, that can be difficult to do if you, you know, don't have good tools, you're not really big and strong, you don't have a bicycle mount. I do not have a bicycle mount, but I am big and strong, so I was able to make it work. They give you a great set of tools when you get the bike, but still, it is quite a bit of work to get it going. And if you just don't, have never worked with bikes before, that could be pretty intimidating. So if that sounds like you and you're not sure about doing the setup on it yourself, you might want to check with a local bike shop, see if they would be able to help you out with getting it ready to ride. And really that's a good idea if you're doing any kind of an online ordering bike is to check with your local bike shop just to see like, hey, if I want to bring this in for a tune-up or repairs or something like that, is that something you guys will do? Most bike shops will, but some will not. You know, if, if they, you didn't buy it there and it's not a regular bike, they don't want to service it, especially since this is kind of getting into moped territory. It might be, you know, something that bike shops will not service. I do recommend checking that out as just, you know, something that to consider before making a purchase. All right, guys, we've talked a whole bunch about this. So enough talk, let's jump on it and you know, we'll take it for a spin. All righty, we are all set here. I've got it on the wide lens so you can see. Got the upright seating position, good, you know, comfy, relaxed feel to it. So you can see I'm not getting close to those full leg extensions, but it's it's good enough that it feels pretty comfortable to pedal. So we're gonna just take off on the throttle here. And I've got it uh, in eco right here, and I'm just giving it a very little bit on the twist throttle. And then if I you know really hit that throttle, it'll Take off at a pretty decent clip, you know, getting up to 12, 13, 14 miles per hour. So it does pretty good there, right? So let's uh, bump that all the way up to race mode so you can see the full throttle. Then once we hit it, like, 
I almost fell off the back of it here and we're, we're like already past, we're already up to 20 miles an hour. <laughs> we're getting some serious speed going. Let's uh, slow down for the stop sign here. Yeah, when you're in race mode, it takes off. And, and the same is true for pedaling in race mode, right? As soon as I start to pedal, massive acceleration. And it is, uh, it's it's pretty loud motor too. I mean, it's a thousand watt motor back there, so it's no surprise that it's loud. Now this is a, a custom motor that Juice Bikes has developed with Bafang that, uh, you know, a thousand watt nominal, I'm not sure what it peaks at. I, it's, it's somewhere up over 2000 for sure. So very, very powerful motor. Let these people go by. And so, you know, with that power comes volume. People are gonna notice you when you're riding this. They're, they're gonna notice you anyways if they look at you. So they, they'll notice you from here and you too. I wanna try and demo the, the thing I was talking about with the pedal assist being just a little bit funky, right? It's, it's not bad, it just behaves differently than most bikes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna slow down here and try to position the camera so that you guys can hear it. But it, essentially what it does is it's torque that activates the pedal assist, but then it's cadence that keeps it going, right? So if you, starting out, if you put a lot of pressure into the pedals, you push hard, it's going to respond with a high level of assist. And then if you slow down your pedal cadence and you're, you're not pushing on the pedals hard at all, you're still pedaling, but not putting any effort into it, the motor does not adjust down the level of assist. It'll keep helping you at that really high level, which can be kind of weird feeling, right? So like start pedaling here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push really hard for a couple of revolutions, Urgh, really put some muscle into it. Now I'm just pedaling very slowly. I'm actually not helping at all. Like I'm not even putting any actual pressure onto the cranks. I mean, I'm still in speed five here, but as you can hear, the motor is still going and still accelerating me forward. And then if I stop pedaling, then the motor will cut out. And like a typical cadence sensor, it will have a little bit of a delay. But it's just, it, it's a very strange feeling compared to normal torque sensor bikes, right? Even the Juice Drip Current S on that one, if you, you know, you start out pedaling hard, the motor will respond, give you a lot of power. And then if you just slow down your pedaling, you're not pushing very much on the pedals, the motor will draw the power down a bit. This does not. And at first I didn't like it, it just, because it was weird, right? But the more I've ridden it, the more I kind of like it because it, it feels like a moped configuration, right? Where I can, you know, when I'm, when I'm starting out, I'll, I'll pedal hard to really get going. And then I just want to maintain speed. And so I just keep pedaling to do that. Uh, it, you still have to stop pedaling to get the motor to dial back. That can be a little bit annoying, but, but yeah, that's how it works. And then the other part of it that is weird is that there is a delay on starting like you would see from a cadence sensor, but it's like the torque sensor has a delay. And I'll try to show you what I mean. If I, if I pedal hard, like, pedal hard but a very short distance, not enough to activate the cadence sensor, you'll, you'll hear the motor like <laughs> give a little, give a little bit, right? And it's, and it's consistent with the amount of pressure that I put on the pedals too. If I do that, like a short burst, but a little, little bit of pressure, then I'll just get a little bit of motor. So that's just kind of strange, right? Typically torque sensors respond much more quickly you know, this one's got a delay. I'm not sure why it's set up like that. I think it rides great for the use case of this bike being ridden more like a moped or a scooter than a typical e-bike. It's just you know, a little bit different. I have never ridden one that performs quite like it. So anyway, moving back just to do a bit more riding here. Very stable cockpit, despite the mini bike design. Mini bikes tend to be a little bit more wobbly and difficult to ride no handed, but no problems on this one which is fine for me. I do enjoy riding no-handed. You can reach up and swivel the headlight a bit if you need to adjust it. Now you can't really see it on the road here, but if we flip that high beam on, you can see it even in this, you know, kind of twilight we got going on here. Very bright, horn, crazy loud. I mean, it's, it's as loud as a car horn. It'll definitely get you noticed. 
great, great safety aspect. The mirrors are awesome for being able to see to the side and behind you. It, it really does feel like you're riding on a motorcycle or just riding on a scooter if you've ridden one before. But it's also a bike. It's kind of in this weird in the middle status like that where you can use it for both. Now due to the power and configuration of it, it may not be legal on bike paths where you live. So, you know, definitely be careful about that. All right, so we got it over here in level three power assist. So we're gonna just push it a little bit, right? I'm just gonna start pedaling harder here. Now I do have it in gear five right here. I don't have too fast of a cadence yet, so we'll, we'll push that a little bit and you know, get shifted up to six. Now we're going about 20 miles per hour. So we've passed by what the throttle can do, still easily accelerating. And I think the speed limit is only 20 in here too, so we're, we're gonna slow that down a bit. But yeah, I was only in gear six out of eight and you know, not really putting much effort in. Like I'm, I'm not winded at all from doing that. But it's got a significant amount of power available. We're gonna take it out, uh, I think, onto the, the main road out here and show you what it can do in its natural element, you know, what it's designed for. All right, we're gonna kick this all the way up into race mode, baby. We're gonna really take it for a spin. We'll just take off on just the throttle here. No, no pedaling at all. And look at that, we're already up there at 20 miles per hour. Ah, it's so much fun to ride like that. All right, we're gonna head out onto the street here. Oh, hey, we got a green light. And you go right over here, speed limit of 25. Pedaling in race mode. We're already there, we're already at 25, easy. When you're in race mode, the pedal assist doesn't seem to use the torque sensor a whole lot. It, it, it kind of seems like if, if it activates at all, it activates at full power. You know, I'll, uh, I'll even like start pedaling slow. Ah, it did go a little bit lower. And if I, if I put some more pressure, <laughs> really takes off there. All right, let's get slowed down and shifted down here. All right. I do like to give it just a little bit of throttle as I'm getting going. So there we go, we're all the way up in gear eight. And yeah, get that 30. No problem. And you know, even uh, without pedaling, if we wanna just use the throttle, you can see we're still climbing right back up there. And there's 30. And it's it's got more in it too. Like it will it will keep accelerating past 30. Now that's really only if you're you know got a full battery or pretty close to full battery. When, as you start getting down lower capacity, the battery just doesn't have as much oomph to it. So your your top speed, your acceleration are gonna go down a bit. But when you got full battery like we got right now, just absolutely massive power. It's a combination of the motor that they're using and then also their, their battery platform, right? That massive capacity battery really makes a big difference. Uh, what did, I wanted to show you guys the, the thing with the derailleur, right? The gears, let me shift this down to eco and slow down here. So when you get it all the way shifted down into, into level one, then very easy pedaling at low speed, right? It's, it's, it's a decent gear ratio, but you can hear some rattling going on. You hear that rattling and, and, and vibrating there. Now, I, I thought this was my derailleur being out of tune at first, but it is not. It is actually hitting the side of the chain guard. Here, let's come around here so you guys can see. So if you look down here from this angle, you can see how the chain is just stretched you know, way over to the inside of the bike. And so that rattling that you hear is from it hitting the bash guard. I think it's the bottom where it really hits. It bumps up against it right there, hits it a little bit right there. Everything's in line in the back. Really just, you know, what causes that is because we have an eight speed back here and it's just a, a pretty wide cassette. And then you have a very short wheelbase, very short distance between that chain ring and the rear cassette. Thus, it's just not, 
it's it something is not going to line up perfectly <laughs> either that's going to be you know the high gears or the low gears or the very highest and lowest if you tried to line it up in the middle so you know clearly juiced was like okay well we'll line it up so that the the high end gears the high speed stuff is lined up perfectly i think that's fine i also think they could have you know gone with a seven speed <laughs> or or even a six speed back there considering it's really more of a moped and you don't need to pedal that much you don't need that much of a range for it right but you know it still works i stay out of those low gears just because i don't think that that's very good for it to be kind of grinding and rubbing like that but in first gear it is quite easy to pedal now you're still not gonna you're not gonna want to be you know riding this up any steep inclines without battery power or really riding it anywhere without battery power it's heavy enough at 120 pounds that you want to make sure oh hey i just uh threw the chain so <laughs> I guess, uh, yeah, I would recommend staying out of uh, first gear. Okay, got the chain mounted back on there. That has not happened to me yet, but this is really the first time I've actually been riding it for any extended amount of time in first gear. So, you know, like I said, not, not lined up too great for that. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to get mounted on the chest mount and we're gonna do, you know, a little bit more high speed riding. I'm gonna ride more downtown where there's better lighting from the street lights. Really show you what it can do on pavement, you know, riding with two hands so it's a little bit more safe. Now I've, I've usually been, you know, shifting down to five when I'm, you know, stopping at a stoplight or something like that. I found that to be pretty good for starting out. I mean, I use the throttle typically for a little bit to get going. Level five is easy enough, you know, maybe down to level four if there's a little bit of an incline, but with the motor, that, that feels pretty good. We're in an Eco right now, and it's easy enough to pedal that, you know, I could do this for a long ways. You know, if I was riding to, you know, go hang out with some friends and I wasn't in a hurry, this would work pretty good. But if I, you know, wanted to ride with traffic and go a little bit faster, kick that up to at least level three. And since we can handle the speed, I'm just gonna ride in the lane with traffic. The bike lane ends up here as it is. A little bit of throttle to get going and then just pedal it from there. put that turn signal to use and you can uh, you can actually see it up there they're they are pretty bright so it makes it more difficult to forget if you leave it on you can actually see it blinking down there make sure we turn the turn signal off and I am just pedaling here not using the throttle speed limit on this road is 25 miles per hour and we're going to be able to reach that quite easily without having to go up to a higher level of assist. Yeah, we're cruising at about 25, 26. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I did have to stop pedaling and then start again so I could get the motor to kind of reset back down to that lower level, right? It's that thing where I was talking about where it just kind of sticks at whatever assist level you, you put it to. I'm outpacing that Subaru that we started next to. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think they were trying to race us or anything, but still, it does feel pretty cool to be able to keep pace with or even outpace some cars on the road. Now we're getting to a higher speed limit area here. So I'm gonna bump it all the way up to race mode. We're letting out all the stops here make sure that we can keep up with the flow of traffic because the speed limit's 30, but you know, traffic will often flow closer to 35. We're all the way up in gear eight, the highest gear for the, you know, the drivetrain side of things. And I've got a pretty decent cadence here. I can get it up to about 35 miles an hour and still, and, you know, that's where it starts to feel a bit too fast to pedal. Now it is a pretty decent workout to maintain those, you know, 30 to 35-ish mile per hour speeds. 
while pedaling. Like you, you definitely get your workout in at that point, which I like. You know, you, you got some place to go in a hurry, still want to get some exercise. Perfect, perfect setup for that. Ooh, Waffle Lab. It's a really good food truck. All right. So we're, we're moving into 35 mile an hour speed limit zone here. We're still at full battery. So we should be able to take this no problem. Up into gear eight again. We made it up to 33. Now we're going uphill, so losing some speed. All right, turn right here. Cause I'm tired of pedaling that hard. Whew. All right, so we got up to what, 32 there, 33? Couldn't really get much past 33, even though I was, you know, really putting some oomph into it. So I, I would say that 30 is a pretty good, effective top speed. Like many scooters, you know, you can go faster if you're going downhill, get a, get a good stiff tailwind or something like that. But, you know, we're still at full battery capacity, even though we've done how many I think we've done uh, six or seven miles already today. It is uh, dark enough in here that you can you can see how bright that uh, that headlight is, right? Pretty decent. It's it's a very it's a good spread. It does a good job of lighting up your immediate area, and then we'll flick on that bright beam. It is bright. It's it's aimed. It's kind of a down like a half circle, so you can adjust that however you want. I usually have it down kind of low just because I don't want to blind people. It is a little bit off kilter, so you can see, uh, which, you know, now that I noticed it really bugs me. I just haven't tried to straighten it out. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Actually, I don't use the high beam very much, but it is quite bright. You know, if you need to be able to see a lot further, definitely gets the job done. Now, this is good for just showing the bumps right now. The headlight, you can, it, it's like a strobe light if you're using that bright beam and then going over bumps. Hey, I'm riding just in a bumpy alley full of a lot of potholes. So it really has an unpleasant strobe light and that's just from the headlight not being very fastened very securely. So I could tighten that down, that might do the trick, but I do like being able to adjust it a little bit, which is why I have it where it is. And honestly, I think it's still gonna be bouncing up and down a bit, even without that. If we turn off the high beam, no more strobe light effect. Now, of course, it is darker. I can still see this. I have good night vision, though, so that's just, uh, you know, something to be aware of for the main headlight if you ride on a lot of bumpy roads and are sensitive to that kind of light pattern. I'm gonna go back through those bumps one more time, a little bit faster, just for the suspension, right? So I'm, I'm just gonna keep talking as I go through here at about 20 miles per hour. So these are some pretty serious bumps here, but for me as the rider, it feels great, honestly. <laughs> the suspension really handles it like a champ. And even though the, you know, the light's bouncing quite a bit, you can hear the chain jingle jangling a bit. As far as rider comfort goes, suspension and that really thick banana seat, like it's, uh, it's awesome, it really does a great job. Okay, gang, we are out of daylight and I am out of things to talk about for now. So that is a wrap for this review. The Juiced Hyper Scorpion, the e-bike slash electric moped from Juice Bikes, brand new this year in 2020. Now I know this has been a pretty glowing review. Obviously I love this thing. It's really fun. A lot of cool stuff to talk about here. I do want to just kind of throw in a grain of salt with that, all right? I'm a motorcycle rider. I've been riding two-wheeled vehicles of all sorts since I could walk pretty much. So, you know, this is right up my alley, right? This is kind of the perfect electric vehicle for me as somebody who likes the style and also likes to get a little bit of exercise. But it comes with, with trade-offs, right? It's, it's not gonna be a perfect fit for everybody. It's really heavy for one thing, really not designed for, you know, extensive, comfortable pedaling, especially not low speed. So if you run out of power and you have to bike home and you live someplace that has a lot of hills, that's just going to be a, a pretty rough time, not going to be a whole lot of fun. It can be a little bit size prohibitive since there's only one size. Now, if you don't have the tall seat option, then it should fit you if you're 5'2 and above, is what Juiced says. 
So if you're shorter than that, even the regular one is probably not gonna be a great fit. And if you're a bit taller like me, you can give that tall seat option, but still might feel a little bit small, you know, still definitely doable. But overall, like I, I really love the loadout that they have on here. To me, the one biggest drawback of this vehicle is that it really is technically a moped, right? It is, it is not actually a class three e-bike because it can go much higher speeds with the factory configuration. You know, even just pedal assist, you can get past 28 on the lower levels and then bump that up to race mode and you can go all the way up to 30. So even if you were riding it slower, like a class three e-bike, if a policeman were to stop you, you could still get in trouble if you didn't have it registered like a scooter. So, you know, get your insurance, get your registration, look up what you need to do for your state to be riding legally and just check your laws for where you can ride, right? Because some places you might not be able to ride on bike paths or bike lanes, it's really gonna depend on where you live. So make sure you check that out, get that squared away. Now, for anything that I forgot to mention in the video review and getting all the exact specs and measurements for this bike, head back to electricbikereview.com. We got the full written review there. There's a link in the description of this video. We've also got a forum there and search and compare tools so you can find the perfect e-bike to fit your needs. If you guys got questions or comments on the review, please you know chime in down in the comments section. Give me a holler and I'd love to talk with you guys about the bike, see what you think about it. And thanks for watching the review and we'll catch you next time.